present to you <clears throat> the box's position paper on shame. Today's topic is shame. For women especially, shame colors our daily lives. It's used to sell us things we don't need, it's used to make us feel lesser than men and than one another, and it's used to ensure our lives and our bodies are not ours alone to govern. In short, it's used to keep, to keep patriarchal power structures in place. So today we're going to solve all of that. Just kidding, that's fucking impossible. <laughs> but maybe we can start to chip away at a small corner of it, starting with this fucking tweet. Take a good long look at this tweet. The tweet, all of it, the photo, which is Kim Kardashian in Northwest, the caption, the connection we're supposed to make is basically sexualizing a toddler. It's gross, but mostly harmless, right? It's just a tweet, and it's just about a famous person. Who cares? Well, I care, because let's look closer. First of all, there's nothing wrong with Kim Kardashian holding her own baby while her baby eats a lollipop. What's wrong is to choose a caption that connects a baby to a sex act similar to ones her mother and millions of other adults, by the way, have participated in. Hey, come here. Come real close to my face. I want to say something directly into your mouth. I want sex. Women want sex. Nice spirited, inventive, consensual sex with someone we trust. But that's not okay with Billboard. How do I know? Because their Twitter account sexualized a baby in order to shame her sex-having mother for the thousandth time. Listen up, everyone. Billboard's Twitter account is giving us all a master class on shame. Step one, select a target. Like someone who's been slut-shamed so much, she's low-hanging fruit, so low no one can blame you for picking her. Except they did, so you took the tweet down. But, step two, Apologize, in a classic non-apology style saying, quote, we apologize for the tweet involving Northwest. The caption was about her comments to paparazzi. The suggestion some see was not intended. <sighs> that baby apparently has a lot to say about the paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> which leads to step three, gaslight the situation, transferring the blame. Some of you see something here, which is like how some people see ghosts. You're crazy. <laughs> we weren't intending to shame anyone. You're choosing to see it that way, maybe. Or maybe we just recognize this kind of shame because we see it every day. Step four, make it all about you. Bad publicity is free publicity. You got a lot of attention, Billboard. You fucking won. Guys, when was the last time Billboard was relevant? <laughs> <laughs> Billboard.com is run by four white men who also make up 80% of Billboard magazine subscriber base. <laughs> but with this one move, they got the attention of thousands of people. That's how this shame shit works. It's viral, and not in a cat video way, but in a middle ages, there's shit in the water, and now everyone in the village is dead kind of way. <laughs> to those four horsemen of the asshole apocalypse, it's just a harmless tweet, but they shit in the water. Pretty soon, we'll all get dysentery of the mind and start accepting bullshit wholesale. Northwest has two of the most powerful parents in the world, but odds are she's still gonna grow up thinking she's a slut by birth because she's a girl. It seems to me like the rotten apple doesn't fall far from the rape culture tree. How about we stop telling young girls their bodies and the acts they perform are dangerous and have to be hidden, and we start telling young men that bodies are to be respected. <laughs> According to high school dress codes, you all get boners from three inches of exposed shoulder bone. According to Instagram guidelines, you all get boners from the one inch circle in the middle of my breasts. And it's somehow my job to prevent that while also making sure I'm game for it. Our bodies make your bodies feel things, but our bodies are not making them do things. The article in question is about how Northwest doesn't want her picture taken, which makes her like her father, Kanye West. If you want to imply that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, why not use a picture featuring North and Kanye, like any one of these? <laughs> What kind of intergenerational slut-shaming fuckery is this billboard? And here's the part where I say I'm not even a Kim K fan, but actually I am because I'm a fan of human beings and it feels like it's absolutely necessary to defend Kim Kardashian's humanity constantly. And now her child's because her humanity is mine and it's yours too. A few weeks ago, Fox News had a panel of men decide when it was appropriate for women to wear leggings. One said it was okay as long as she wore a shirt long enough to cover her lady parts. You don't need to be protected from our parts. Classically, historically, and systematically, we have needed to be protected from yours. Yeah. So, 
here's the deal. Women will wear what we want and have the kind and amount of sex we want, and neither we nor our offspring will be shamed for it, okay? And you four dudes at Billboard and men everywhere, you get to worry about your own dicks. Yeah. That's my rant. Now here's a funny video about shame. <laughs> Sixth grade. It was a Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, ironically. I was so excited, which seems naive now, but I had just gotten my braces off the other day, and I was so happy that's when it happened. It was Vera's period. For a record 16 hours, Vera sat in class too ashamed to move. It's a record held to this day. A lot of people ask me, why didn't you tell someone? Why didn't you just stand up? They'll never know what I went through that day. I'm sorry. All my mom ever told me about periods was that if you let boys touch you, you'll get pregnant and they'll leave. Look, I was a single mother, okay? Before smartphones. Most days it felt like standing in the wind holding a candle, hoping it didn't blow out. Good metaphor, huh? I've had 20 years of guilt and shame to craft it. My mom meant well, but instead of explaining things to me, she would just put pads in my lunchbox. I kept one. She got her period at age 12, 12. In the Middle Ages, she would have been married off to a baron or some shit. Look, I admit I didn't know how to handle it. I went to Catholic school. The only blood we talked about was the blood of Christ. You! Sit up straight. A curved spine is the devil's slide. It is a woman's burden and blessing to carry shame. It's what the Lord intended. Otherwise, why would he tell all of those men to write it down? It goes all the way back to Eve eating the apple. Oh, no, no, no. I actually didn't eat the apple. It was Caveboy over here. Huh? What? Yeah, that was me. Apples are dope, and I was hangry. Um, hangry is when you're like hungry and you're angry. As Adam um, proceeded to mansplain the meaning of hangry, we wondered how we got the story of Genesis so wrong. There was only one being who knew the truth. Of course I thought Eve did it. She's the one who apologized. Oh, wait, was she doing that thing women do where they apologize for things that aren't their fault? She was doing that, wasn't she? Ooh, Eve. Ugh. If I could go back, I'd create it all differently. I'd make everyone black as hell. And a woman. I didn't mean to cause shame to all women for eternity. I'm so sorry. Shit! I mean, uh, sorry. <sighs> it's the only way she'll learn. Now, I'm a grown woman. I'm not ashamed of my period. It's natural. Now I just palm my tampon and run like hell to the bathroom, like everyone else. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our panel for this evening. Uh, she is an improviser, a singer, a writer, a comedian originally hailing from Florida. Please welcome Red Pierre. <laughs> Visionary Award, director of the documentaries The Muslims Are Coming and Nerdcore Rising. Please welcome Nagin Farsad. <laughs> she is a stand up and writer who has appeared on The Nightly Show with Larry Wilmore. She's also co host of the What Is This podcast and recently appeared on the Apollo Comedy Club. Please welcome Hadia Robinson. <laughs> to introduce you to our very rad house DJ, DJ Shaw Savage, everybody. Do you guys hear that? I've always wanted to say something and having someone go, burr, burr. There you go. Yes. All right, well, the show's over for me because it can't get any better than that. Um, all right, ladies, welcome to the panel. Thank you so much for being here. So let's just get right into it. Why do we feel shame. Let's talk about it. I think
think uh, I think we feel shame because it's something that we're raised in. It's an environment that we're raised in, and I think it talked a lot about it in the video, going all the way back to Adam and Eve and having a period and not, you know, nobody really. I know for myself, nobody really explaining all how women are great. Yeah. It's more of a burden to be a woman. You're gonna get cramps. You're gonna have a period. You're gonna be up there on your period. You know, nobody talks about how great it is and how wonderful it is, and we bring life and what how magical that is, how magical we are as women. So yeah. I think that's where the shame begins. I think I would agree with that. I think for me personally, it was it started off with my parents and how they raised me. Right, like it was always more males were more important in my culture, and like females were a little bit shameful, and we were shame upon our family and uh, and then having that reinforced by like media and seeing that every day and everything that I see everywhere is it kind of hammered that in for me. I um track it back to Zach Zeely in the sixth grade. <laughs>
rising, low rising, mid rising, low rising. <laughs> Bitch, I can't fit none of this. <laughs>
thing that happened in my family, thank God, but the paper bag test, you had to be the same color as the paper bag to be accepted in certain groups. And Seriously? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. Paper bag test. And they would straight hold it up to your head like, <laughs> no, and then you just couldn't. So, but this, these are things that culturally we had to deal with, and then coming up and you see magazines and you're not seeing yourself anywhere, so it's like, yeah. where do I fit in? How do where is my beauty? How do I fit into this scope of beauty or whatever? Hair, burning. I remember having a perm and burning my hair out, and I made traumatic perm and press and curl stories. <laughs> 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 Traumatized. But, you know, it's a, at a certain point, and I think where co our culture is right now, there is no, we, we've let so much of that go. A lot of it is still there, but so much of it is gone, and it's freeing. When I let my perm go, it was, it was like running through a meadow. Others. 
<laughs> I want to thank you all for um, being here and witnessing me marry my best friend. <laughs> but I'd, I'd like to take a moment to talk to the other number one man in my life, the number one man now and forever, my daddy. <laughs> right? <laughs> daddy. When I was a little girl, I pledged that I would save my virginity, and, and we went to a purity ball, and there was a ceremony, and we took this creepy picture together. <laughs> I look so happy. Well, now I'm married, and it's time for me to um, present to you my certificate of purity. Um, I went to a doctor, and he looked inside for a hymen, and he did not find one. Um, <laughs> It turns out right around junior year of high school, I found out sex is really fun. Um, it's a really good time. I'm not sure why you wanted me to wait until I was 20 or 30 or 35 or possibly never to do it. It's fun. And I've had a good amount. I've had a fair amount of sex, Daddy. I mean, if this is our vagina, we're going to talk about what goes in and out of it. Um, I've had some good sex, some weird sex, which is just like a fun story, you know? Um, uh, consensual, mostly protected, a lot, you know. Um, mostly, mostly with men, but you know, if a Ukrainian cocktail waitress got in there, that's not my fault. Okay, I lived on a cruise ship. Um, yeah, I, 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 I feel like uh, I feel like now I'm supposed to feel like guilty or ashamed or like bad that I'm like no longer pure or that I'm used up or that I'm broken or that I explored my sexuality in a safe and healthy way with people I trust or you know or that I figured out which guys are into choking and lost their numbers <laughs> don't do that guys unless we ask for it don't <laughs> but I think that you should be you should be proud of me that I took possession of my body at a young age because I'm proud of that okay one pregnancy scare at this age one <laughs> All right, you made my body your business. Let's have a little bit of a, of a meeting about it. I uh, masturbate a lot. I fucking love touching myself. It's awesome. Everybody should do it, okay? And all women should know how to make themselves feel good, and sometimes I can't sleep, okay? <laughs> Do you, do you really think that I'm like napping that much when I come home for the holidays? <laughs> Idiot. Um, the good news is though, daddy is the doctor that went down there and, and, and was looking for a hymen and again, I took that test pass fail. Um, he, did, he did find out and was able to verify that I am an anal virgin. Um, I, I kept it pure in the butt, Daddy. Um, not for lack of trying. I am into it. I just was never with a guy who really pushed for it. I guess the puss is just that good. Um, but I don't know. I guess, I guess maybe tonight's the night. Right, Roger? I don't know. He has no idea what's about to hit him. <laughs> um, Speaking of my current husband, he's got a, has a bunch of things he needs to say to his mother now because in the spirit of equality and wedding tradition, you tell your detailed sexual history to the parent who is the sex that you prefer to have sex with, <laughs> right? Followed by cake. Thank you. <laughs> Multiple times in the last year, I have uh, looked up very 
weight situation. Like I just don't want to care. Like I don't I'm I don't want to hold my stomach in anymore. <laughs> that these incredible jackasses have. From everyday microaggressions, to a lack of access to affordable health care, to sexual and domestic violence, the world of women is overrun with systemic misogyny that is impossible not to recognize. Tonight, as we honor and celebrate the incredibly talented women that exist in the world of comedy today, we must take a moment to honor the vacuous garbage humans <laughs> who aim to shame us into shutting our pretty mouths, smiling and reproducing. They make us laugh. They make us cringe. Here are the nominees for Misogynist of the Month. <laughs> the NFL. Domestic violence is OK. Jair Bolsonaro, too ugly to rape. Patrick Kane, blame the victim. Pennsylvania Supreme Court Justice J. Michael Eakin, fat women are pigs. The winner <laughs> goes to the NFL! <laughs> the NFL could not be here today to accept this award <laughs> as the season is in full swing and they are too busy looking the other way while known rapists and wife beaters make millions of dollars. And who could not forget the misogynists who came before, setting a vile example with their scumbaggery and violence against women. Here is the eternal flame of misogyny.
our amazing writers and performers of the box. All right, well, sometimes, you know, we can all sit in here and think about how awesome we are and how much we know about feminism and the ways of the world, but sometimes you have to be a woman on the street to get the real story. Roll it. Hello, my name is Layla. We are here in beautiful Madison Square Park, and we're going to be doing a woman on the street segment. Now, a lot of young girls learn shame from a very early age, specifically from Disney movies. So what we're going to be doing is reading the plot line to a Disney movie and seeing if people can figure out which movie we're describing. Let's go! A young woman doesn't get invited to a party and reacts by killing a younger woman out of jealousy. The young woman can only be resurrected by non-consensual sexual contact with a wealthy young man. I have no idea. It's not like any film I've ever seen. <laughs> Do you have an idea what kind of genre maybe that sounds like? Sounds like horror or... Yeah, I would go with horror. <laughs> it's Sleeping Beauty. Oh, okay. Kind of sounds like horror. Like a horror movie? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's Sleeping Beauty. Really? Sleeping Beauty? Yes. <laughs> That's Sleeping Beauty. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, Sleeping Beauty! A lot of non-consensual <laughs> sexual contact. Yeah, it's fucked up. Sleeping Beauty, right? Definitely. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. When you were watching it, did you think about it in this way? No, not at all. No? Let's try one more. A young woman is so desperate to please a man that she abandons her family and changes her entire body to get him to notice her. The Little Mermaid. Yes! <laughs> well done. <laughs> Um, okay, okay, I know this one. My big fat Greek wedding? Little Mermaid? Yeah, that's it. You got this, Will. Like, she transforms. She transforms. Is it that movie with Amy Adams? The Little Mermaid, I think. Yeah. Yes. You do? Why? I do. Because she's just rude. I mean, she, like you said, like seriously, broke her dad's heart just to be on land. I completely agree. A young woman develops Stockholm Syndrome for her emotionally abusive captor after she's trapped against her will for advocating for a victim of elder abuse. Beauty and the Beast. Nolan, you are a cinematic genius. What do you guys think? Emerson, do you want to try? I have no idea. Do you know what Stockholm Syndrome is? No. So Stockholm Syndrome is when you become captured by somebody and you eventually oh, go to love them. What's that? Sympathize. Exactly. Yeah. I don't, still don't know what it is. That's okay. What do you guys think? I have no idea. Me that's Beauty and the Beast. Oh. Right? Did you ever think, have you guys seen it? Yeah. 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 Did you like it? Yeah. Did you ever think about it? Think about that way? No. No? Yeah, me neither. Is it a real movie? You just made it, it? No, it's a real movie. I don't know it. What is it? That one is Beauty and the Beast. That's Beauty and the... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's Beauty and the... Holy shit. <laughs> I know you never thought about it before, have you? We were having this conversation actually like a few weeks ago about how how like abusive that relationship is between Beauty and Beast, but somehow he miraculously like keeps her at the end. And she stays yeah. or like fight. How and does make that would have never happened in any kind of context of anything else? Basically, um, like women are being brainwashed from an early age through Disney Boom. movies. Boom, you got it. So. Right. It actually yeah. was my favorite Disney movie as a kid. But I didn't realize the abusive part until I got older. Mm. But I think I was so hung up on like the glitz and the glamour right. and the beauty about the movie because he was like this really attractive guy and the beast and the spell. Like you kind of like overlook that because you can't think that far yet. I think a lot of that stuff, young, like talking about girls, right? Like sure. children, um, probably wouldn't immediately make those assumptions because I don't think that they think that way. But I think that the subliminal messages that are fed to them it probably creates really negative images in them that they carry, you know, into adulthood. They're kind of setting up two um, gender stereotypes and um, non-consensual... Um, <laughs> kind of being the norm. <laughs> kind of being the norm and contributing to, say, like, uh, rape culture and that, that sort of philosophy. Guys, he gets it! <laughs> A young girl falls, are you kidding me?
that shame is expressed to women is through the fact that when we're in our early teens, we get something called a period. <gasps> I know, it's shocking. <laughs> um, and what I'd like to do right now is bring up a very special guest. Uh, she is the co-creator of Thinks Period Panties. Please welcome Nikki Jackson.
make very clear that one of the root causes for cyclical poverty in the developing world is feminine hygiene, period problems. And that can completely be alleviated with simply offering reusable menstrual pads to girls at an affordable price. Um, so I found this amazing organization based in Uganda called Afri Pads, and they produce washable reusable cloth pads at an affordable price for girls. And so what we've done is we've said for every pair of underwear sold that supports you and I,
and I'm going to say every single name because every person that worked on the show was a woman. Thank you to our panelists, Nagin Farsad, Hadia Robinson, Ren Pierre. <laughs> Actors, uh, Laura Celebitz, Keisha Zolar, Token Male, Giancarlo Mariudo. Thank you, sir. Yeah. My incredible writing staff. And please, ladies, if you would so kindly join me on the stage when I say your names. Megan Baker. <laughs> Leo 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 Leo